Hello, hello. How's it going, everyone? We're just about to start. We're putting, oh, there it is. Oh. Our lower thirds back on. Chad's making the magic happen. We're doing a couple tech things behind the scenes. I'm so excited for this workshop. Oh, oh I'm hearing myself. You're going to hear a little echo in there because I didn't mute that one over there. I got it. I <laughs> muted it. Okay, okay. And, oh, and so Jason, you need to unmute yourself. No, he's good. Sure. Yes, because he, yes, I'm, okay. I'm positive. Okay. Anyway, I'm over Thank here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hello, everyone. Oh, we are so excited that you're here tonight. We are hosting episode two of our brand new series, Protest Puppets. And tonight we have a really special guest. Um, tonight we are joined by Jason Hicks. Um, Jason Trashville Hicks is a self-taught puppeteer, trombone player, printmaker, agitator, and overall awesome guy. Um, one of the reasons that I asked him to come and be a part of this is I know that he's been involved in uh, the protest movements for a long time, going to lots of different protests, and he has been involved with the bread and puppet scene for quite a while. And he understands the power of repetitive imagery and two-dimensional design and how we can incorporate those things into our protest signs and our protest puppets that we're making to bring with us to these events. Because I don't know about you guys, but I plan on continuing to go to lots of protests as much as I can, um, at least until November, and then we'll see what happens. But hopefully things will, we will see a sea change in November and uh, we will continue to fight for what's right. So uh, Jason has um, done lots of things. He's traveled the world teaching about puppets and puppetry and making big puppets and little puppets and has lots of collectives. And one of the main collectives of uh, performers that you can see him with is the Box Cutter Collective. So if you ever see them doing stuff online, streaming, uh, that is Jason Hicks. So without further ado, uh, Jason, are you ready? Yes, I'm seeing you nodding. Um, so hopefully your audio is on. You look unmuted, so I'm going to come on over to you. Hey, Jason. Oh, I can't hear you though. Hold on. I'm. 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 We're gonna unmute you. Let's see. Hmm. Your other camera, your phone. I think that you had your your audio going through. Oh yes. Oh no! Oh yes! Wait, wait, wait! There we go. We're on us. That's it. Look at us. Look over here. <laughs> Look over here. There's nothing. Live theater, ladies and going gentlemen. On the Live theater. Okay, now we're good. Say, say something, Jason. Hello. Yay! Hello. Okay. okay. All right, J Jason is gonna get back into whatever that oh. was. That was so special. I want to see more yep. of it. Yep. Nope. Jason's not here anymore. We did him in. Yep. <laughs> wait, Gone. wait. Where's yep. Jason? We had planned this whole thing. Yep, nope, nope. We uh, we we had enough of him. We're tired of him. He wasn't that good of a puppeteer anyway. So we did him in. Yeah, yeah. You know, we 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 beat him over the head a few times like this. Oh. Yeah, and then uh, we uh had to chop him up with a little bit to chop him oh, up. Not the scissors. Just, just mailed him up. We put him in a package and we mailed him to Bezos because you know everything's coming from Bezos. So we mailed it back to Bezos. So uh, well, thanks for coming, everybody. We got us some important things to do. We'll see y'all later. All right. No, no, no. It's such a short workshop. I don't know how to teach it. Jason, we need you. Ow. 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 Okay. Ow. Okay. Ow. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I was, this is what happens when I sit around to waiting for something and there's suddenly all these toys to play with. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Um, Hello, Jason. Welcome. Um, we're so excited to have you here today. Um, we are really jazzed and pumped to learn from you about uh, repetitive imagery and two-dimensional massive puppets. And if anybody has any questions to ask, um, I'm going to be fielding those to Jason as he's um, showing us things and leading us through his workshop tonight. Cool. 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 So what are we going to do? Um, so I was going to start with just a short kind of just a, like what we're the heck we're talking about with um, two dimensional massive puppetry. Um, partly yeah, this was kind of thought about this idea when we were thinking when Z 
mentioned that people are kind of at home trying to make stuff with not a lot of materials possibly or not a lot of tools and and so to them i thought about the what we do a lot especially working at bread and puppet we use a lot of flat just flat things because they're easy to make and lots of and you can incorporate a ton of people and and it's a lot simpler to maneuver around the streets and just to get to the streets than like making gigantic puppets which are kind of a pain and so um yeah and so there so we're gonna go into some just basic uh a couple basic tricks to make things easy and quick i guess is kind of what the once we start making things but first let me some notes here Ooh, notes. Um, yeah i made some notes so um, fancy. kind of go into some of the reasons like maybe i'll go to the i'll go to some images and um i tried to find some stuff okay that sounds great are you going to share your screen with us yeah just to give people an idea of what right. i'll give you a second to uh, get that set up i'm going to say hi to everybody while you're while you're setting it up hi everybody i'm so happy you're here oh there it goes okay working all right it's, it's getting there okay yes we see your desktop okay so here let's see so i'm gonna so I'm going to start, this is very simple. And this is just a bread and puppet act from a circus. I don't remember when, a couple of years ago. Um, but just to kind of what we're talking about, just like flat two-dimensional things. That's like, and just how these are all, like you see one of these buildings by the, and the reason we talk about collective, like large repetitious images is because, you know, you saw one of these buildings, it would be a very shoddily painted piece of cardboard. Maybe you'd recognize it as a building. Sometimes you don't recognize things in bread and puppet from anything until you see a lot of them. Um, so uh, yeah, so just to give you an idea, like when you put, then you put a bunch of them together and it's a cityscape, obviously, because it's a bunch of buildings. Um, and, but a very simple, like these aren't even, you know, these were made super fast and you can kind of see there's not, not a lot of attention put in detail, but when you see a large, a lot of them, it looks great. Um, and then this is not flat, but just kind of similar when you see lots of something. So, um, so here, this is a section of the climate march a couple years ago that one of the, one of the other box cutters, Sam Wilson, painted a lot of. And um, but is just something to, like that heavy. That I I didn't ever pick that up. I don't think it was that heavy. It's just the mm -hmm. the giant skull is just a flat piece of cardboard. It's not three dimensional. It has big fabric arms, which are probably you know weigh a little more, but um. The thing that's mostly that I kind of, for what our purpose of the day is more of these little skeleton puppets. They're just simple, flat, quick, you know, but just this, the idea of a lot of them. And I think there might be two pictures, you know, and this, this was for, I think this section was about tar sands. Yeah, there's a Canadian leaf on the thing. Yeah, so, um, so this is just like, a, you know, a bunch of quickly made, and these actually have moving parts and stuff. So they're a little, you know, a step above just a flat piece of cardboard. Um, and I could see how like just having one skeleton or even two skeletons is not nearly as effective as having multiples right, of that. Right. And and there's another aspect of something I like to think about with like this style of parading and protest or when you work together is one you're demonstrating. It's like a demonstration of collectivism, which is, you know, which is the alternative to like the American individualistic, you know, destructive ideas that we've kind of all grown up with. Um, and like when you see a large, like what's exciting about this is like, it's kind of, it's a little, it's hard to, sometimes it's challenged to get the group of people together, as we all know, when you try to make coordinate any large group of people. But this, I mean, this group of people was pretty much all gathered on the street right before the march, I believe. But, um, but just demonstrating, like when you see a large group of people doing something together, that's obviously like when you, and when you tile these images in, using the images to group everyone as a cluster and as a group, you're kind of demonstrating what, how like a large group is much more powerful than a, one of us on our own. And just this kind of idea of like working together and, and, um, and just, you know, the, uh, like taking away the individualistic ideas of like art and all these other things that we're kind of grown up with by showing how it's just, this is a much powerful, more powerful image. Um, so that's, that's, to me, is one of the philosophical things about this style of working, instead of just making one giant puppet, but making lots of little things that, when you see it coming down the street, looks much bigger. 
And granted, this one actually is a giant puppet with it, but it's still just a flat piece of cardboard. Um, this is another idea. I think this is from that same section, I think further back of just, this is kind of what we're gonna do today. I'm just gonna, as an example of one is how to make like a quick fist that's something like this style um, or slightly different. But, but this is, you know, you see a bunch of them and you, you notice that in the street way more than you notice like even that one sign behind it, which is a well-made sign and it's Michigan, which is where I am right now. But, um, uh, you know, just the like seeing, you know, like a lot of some, and this is another section of bread and puppet, I think section of this, these are just flat pieces of cardboard turned in, made into deer. But when you see how you see a lot of them and it's a herd and kind of that idea of these, you know, large masses of, um, you know, this was for also for Tarzan against Tarzans. Um, so yeah, so yeah, it's so much more powerful seeing the group um, and the collective together. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, so that's, that's kind of, you know, going for, you know, just beyond just it is art and making beautiful things in the street. It is like, a, a, it's expressing an idea just in the way that it's functioning. It's expressing a different alternative to our, the like power structure that we're trying to fight against. Um, so yeah, so here's another, this is, I think um, this was micro justice and I'm not sure which section this was, but it's another just hands seeing a lot of the similar, same images. These, um, I forget which I'm blinking out right now and which group made all the sunflowers, but I know David Solnet was part of that. Um, but, you know, and these banners, same thing, even just the banners, having lots of these beautiful banners, you, you notice it more than you notice just a sign. Um, this one is just another, this is all the Saints Theater down in Richmond, Virginia. That does a lot of, they do a big massive Halloween parade every year and a May Day parade and a lot of, they've been in the streets every night, I think the last month. But this is kind of, this is a blurry picture, sorry about the quality, but similar fists, how like, just the positioning of all these fists around a big puppet makes it look like a much bigger thing than if it was just the big head and hands. Right. So yeah, and this is just those same fists, but then she used them for a set for a show they did later. Um, but just kind of clearer to see how they, these were all actually hand painted. What we're going to focus on today is just how to make like a stencil so you can kind of get the same idea, but you can also, if you're, if, you know, you can lay out a quick, easy way to paint them by hand and they it has a much a really beautiful look. Um, these are also flat cardboard. This is not repetition necessarily other than they're all Coney Island characters. Um, these are some Sam Wilson also painted. I just wanted to just, you know, you can take it to whatever level depending on your artistic desire and skills and what you want to work towards, um, which this kind of stuff you can make by projecting also, like if you have a projector. But these are these are all giant. Each one of these is like four or five feet tall. They were oh wow! Of um, they look just yeah, they just look like little paintings, but they're actually gigantic flat pieces of cardboard. And when they're on sticks, I think they're about twelve feet tall. That is not part of these. Are just, okay, there we go. And this is from Papa Machete from Puerto Rico. But this, I think, this is the project they did in Boston. They're also based work with Agitarte in Boston. And this is like more. Um, this is kind of between the two of like signs just means of being straight signs but they're all shaped like houses and you know just another simple how simple you can go this is all about the uh, fighting evictions in boston so right, and working with the power of the symbol yeah so like coming up with your imagery thinking you know and this they they work a lot how much it works a lot with community organizations they rarely like decide on their own what they're going to just do they kind of you know, go and work with people and what's what are they working with what are the images that are important to them which is part of another thing i wanted to bring up is we're talking about protest imagery and puppetry is that that um it's kind of a necessity i think really like you can you know like i said if you're right especially in quarantine times it's hard to necessarily meet up with people but but you know thinking in a larger long long term like when you're doing art in the streets for demonstrations it's always, it can always, it's almost always more powerful when you work, you know, with an organization to, whether it's making it with that organization or just like talking, meeting with them and finding out what their focus is. Because often we, I, you know, I know like someone who spends a lot of my time like in a workshop or making stuff and I'm not in the, I'm not out as much at times. You may not know, you know, I'll be reading a lot and think I know what's going on and like, oh, I'll make this thing, you know, and this, 
And sometimes it's like, often I feel like as artists, we can kind of miss the, miss the actual direction that people that are actually in organizing are going. You know, you kind of, you're close, you're like, you're vaguely there, but you, there's often campaigns with strategies, with real messaging um, that they've been working on with a community. So it's really good to, just a thing I tell every, you know, anyone that you're, when you're talking about political art, like be in touch with, find organizations in your town and like go to their meetings and like sit through their meetings and get to know them and work with, you know, work beside them or with them. And that way you can like, when you go out on the street, one, it's an organization. So when you need 40 people to like carry all these things, you can actually, you know, call upon an organization that might have 40 people. And then you're much more unified, but also you really can like get into the nuance of the messages, the strategy, how people are fighting against whatever they're fighting against and make sure that, and you can kind of, your artwork can be more in line with that and actually help their campaign move forward um, by presenting the visuals for their campaign. So like this one was with City Life, um, mm -hmm. you know, and this is all different stuff they were working on with, you know, like even like this one, like one that catches my mind is like, don't evict, negotiate. You know, it's like, if I was just like, I'm going to do an anti-eviction thing, I, that wouldn't be something I would have necessarily like thought of to write on the thing. Like I have to stand up, fight back, like those things like that. We in tax the rich, like that stuff's the kind of things that we can quickly go toward, go to. But there's little things like, like that's part of their campaign is they want to, you know, negotiate to people, keep people in their homes. So like, that's the importance of getting to know who you're working with and who you're working kind of for often. Um, mm -hmm. So the last few things, this is from a project, cause like today we're gonna work, like work on some fists just to kind of show some techniques of how you make a big image. Um, but this is, you can kind of make, just to start, you can make anything. This was in, when we worked during the climate march, all of us at Papa Machete worked with a group in the Bronx called South Bronx Unite. And they were fighting against um, moving a big distribution center into the South Bronx, another one which they already have plenty of things like that, but it was the um, Fresh Direct and did, uh, food trucks, they were trying to move their hub, which would have brought like 1,800 more trucks a day, diesel trucks into the city, into the South Bronx, which already has the highest level of asthma in the country. So our, the symbol they picked when we, from working with this group was the, the inhalers, because everybody, almost everyone there was like had inhalers and because so many people suffer from asthma. So all the messaging and our signs were all on inhalers and we made about, I don't remember, 20, 30 of these so that was like a map, you know, you saw all these people carrying these just little flat cardboard inhalers, but we made them, you know, bright color and fit in the color scheme of the whole show and or parade. And, you know, so that's, a, you know, simple idea of just finding a very simple object. Um, I, I'm seeing a lot of big pieces of cardboard. Where do you source your cardboard from? Um, where do you, yeah, look, common places to find it. Good places are bike shops. Almost, you know, kind of anytime I pass a bike shop, if I have a way to carry it, I'll stop in and just see if they have boxes, furniture and appliance stores, um, you know, places that either furniture rental places or furniture sales places. Um, you know, if you have a big shopping mall or strip mall by where you are, just drive behind it and check all the recycling boxes because you never know. Uh, lots of places for some reason have larger stuff. Um, but also you can like even just small boxes, you can open them up like the ones I'm going to use today is not actually that big so I could fit it on my table, but, um, you know, even grocery stores, they don't have the biggest stuff, but, you know, like say the boxes that paper towels come in are actually a decent size. So kind of any, those are like the standard places I always look towards when I'm trying to find stuff. Yeah. I would never have thought of bike shops. That's a really great tip. Yeah, bike shops, like new bikes come in these gigantic boxes that are perfect. Um, right. And they don't sell the bike in the box. So yeah. <laughs> they just put it together and sell. Right. So yeah. and they're always happy to give it to someone instead of having to throw it, you know, drag it to the recycling. Um, and this one, this is also a thing, not that, well, the Papa Machete, we built this giant, but um, the thing in this picture I want to show is the little, there are these, we made with a school, two of us worked in um, the El Puente Academy in Williamsburg. And we made in the little, on the, let's see, computer, stage right, computer, looking at the computer screen, left side, I think there's that little guy, you see like a kid with like a toboggan on his head like a little flat, a flat uh, 
person kind of up above the crowd that's a cartoon looking thing um yes. that, all these little black signs that have uh there's one that says defendiendo a nuestra madre tierra um those were things we made with students and this is just like thinking of these are the little signs were all skull skeleton heads on the backside. They were these blue and they were all the same color on the backside. And then they all had different signs on the, like they're all painted black with messaging on those. And so the kids, we made those with high school kids along with these little people, they made like just kind of characters of all the people in their neighborhood. And then we put those on sticks and then they, one arm moved. So these are also two dimensional flat things, but they had a moving part. So they're kind of the jumping jack puppets. And let's see if there's another, you can kind of see some in the background, but I couldn't find a picture. There was about 12 of them and they looked amazing because they stood above the crowd and it was, and they'd all put their fists in the air and they would, the kids would all do it at the same time. Like they kind of unif organized themselves to like move together. And it was beautiful. And really, you can kind of see like three of them under the arm, the right arm of the giant, giant puppet. So that's just another idea of like, you know, incorporating moving parts and we can try to, I can try to talk about that a little bit um as we get through things and these are just last few images or just that's another simple this is not a cardboard thing but an painting on umbrellas people have done a bunch of that which is, looks beautiful you get a whole bunch of umbrellas and paint your stuff and you know now especially when everyone has these drone cameras flying around if all your messaging is about people's heads um it's another beautiful way and it keeps the sun oh, off i people. love those wow so yeah, th these were really i forget which with eric with these what i'm forgetting i think this was about housing also um i, I love the, the merging of the two images of the yeah. apartment house and the hand and or the fist that's really powerful yeah these i have when i was looking for these other images i found these i'm like these are way more beautiful than what i was looking for so yeah and they, this was they only had two of these but they were still very beautiful flat um you know who, i'm not sure who made these but they were really good painters it's kind of the set to bachman actually it might have been set to bachman because he works with them a bunch but it's in his style of that, you know, I don't know if people know his artwork, but he's done a bunch of really good books. Um, and then, so yeah, that was the last of the flat thing. This is, and then this is a non-flat thing. This was a, just a, also just cardboard, just to kind of show like, this was um, a thing me and Crystal made for a, um, the campaign that's on the thing, the, the, con, the con con or whatever it was a couple years ago, um, but it was a Trojan horse. And it's all just cardboard. Like we, I don't even think we mache. We mache a few pieces of it, but most of it's just straight cardboard. And Crystal painted. She's an amazing painter. Painted it to look like wood, so it looks like the Tro Trojan heart. Like I built the structure, and then she just did all the painting. And it had a, it had a, battery charged um, leaf blower in the back, and it would blow fake money out of its butt, which was pretty funny. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, you know, just as you play with cardboard, you can take it to all sorts of levels. And the stuff we're going to do today, actually, especially with like figuring out dimensions and measurement, kind of, it does actually help with that stuff because we're going to go. We're going to get like sort of nitty gritty and like mathematical a little bit. Okay, how do I get out of this? Um, so you would go to stop screen share. You should see uh, like a little. Ah, there you right. go. Stop. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. All right. All right. And then I'm going to spotlight you back on your iPhone if it oh I think your okay. iPhone maybe the screen turned off oh, oh really? Did it do that okay. oh no no the screen is on oh, sorry you're on. still screen sharing or your screen is off on your iPad oh, so turn that back on so we can see your face okay zoom go to zoom there, there you go. are okay I'm coming back to you Thank you for bearing with there you are okay good I forgot which one was which but I'm I'm with you and okay zoom go no, just go to Zoom. There You're in go. it. Don't worry about it. You got it. Okay. <laughs> oh! <clears throat> oh, no! Is everything water. okay? Yeah, yeah, I just knocked over a glass of water. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. All right, so you guys, clean up a second. Think about any questions that you want to ask him because we will, um, I will be fielding those questions to him while he's making the puppet. Last week we made a cool fist with Sedwan. This week we're going to make a fist with uh, Jason, but he's going to show us how to make stencils so that we can reproduce them in multiple quantities, hand them out to people at protests as well. So, um, okay. Jason, I have I have uh, information to share with you. We have yes. lots of fans watching. Um, 
We have people saying hello from Puerto Rico, from Buffalo. Um, you have um, people from Washington saying hello. Marianne Ross says hi. Um, we have, you have friends from all over saying hello. So friends, if you want to um, uh, ask any questions while he's building, I will field those to Jason. So are your notes okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're still, they're, they're soggy as they probably should be. You know, it's humid here. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go to, yeah, enough babbling. I mean, we can keep babbling as we go. And uh, Z, feel free to tell me if I am go on, like if I'm kind of ranting, rambling a little too much. because I. Too I'm here to help. You got okay, it. Great. I'm just giving, I'm empowering you to tell me like, uh, Jason, move on. <laughs> so, <laughs> no worries. I don't even um, what kind of it, what, what are materials are we going to need to work with you tonight, right. Jason? So we're going to we can you yeah, we're going to work in cardboard, and but also this is some of the, it's also done on poster board. Um, cardboard is obviously the um, in abundance right now, most places. But um, especially the stencil stuff, I did it all in cardboard initially, but. To make if for the stencil part of it, it's actually easier to do on, on poster board if you have some because it's just easier to cut through. But um, so we'll... in poster board, you could get at like Staples or any kind of like yeah. wa like any kind of larger office supply place. Yeah. In New York, you can go to any bodega. It usually has it nowadays. And That's oh, true. Yep. Mm -hmm. store, dollar stores, all those kind of things. Dollar stores are great. Dollar Tree will have it. Yeah, have it. Um, um. So yeah. Okay. Um, so the thing I wanted to, because since y'all, especially if people have been making, made some fists, but part of what I wanted to do was to talk about ways to make a picture big and actually look accurate if you're not necessarily like art, like I kind of, you know, if you're either a self-taught or you don't make regularly draw, or if you're not, if you don't consider yourself an artiste or a drawer or whatever you want to call it. Um, there's some, I want to go some tricks if um, to to make how you can blow something up big and how have it still look like you want it to look. Um, so I just drew this fist here, like, and um, I started with that. I was just and just by looking at my fist and drawing it. But if you've and which is a good thing to practice, it's fun to try to draw things and. Um, you know, I won't go into it. This is, I won't do a full drawing class on it, but just, you know, part of like my, the trick to doing that, if you're going to just draw it yourself is like looking at for shapes and how they relate to other shapes. So like your pinky, how much, how far is your pinky lower than this piece here? How, you know, like how big is this part of your pinky compared to that part of your ring finger compared to that, you know, where does your thumb cross? And like, so just looking. And when you're shape shapes too, like, you mean like, like this kind of yeah. looks like an oval or like a rounded oh, rectangle. Yeah. yeah, and like this, like what looks like a box. And like they, I, when I've done these before, like I feel like I've drawn a ton of fists because people like to make fists for things. Um, another way, you know, like when, when I first started trying to figure out how to draw hands, because hands are like the hardest freaking thing to draw for whatever reason. It's just like you have, maybe because you have to use your hand to draw it. But like, you know, it started out just like one way, just like make the rough shape is like this, you know just make a box and with a tube on it or whatever. And then you start like, and I just would make them really boxy. Like there's this, you know, and, and this actually can look totally fine for what you're, you know, you like, you might even just decide that it, you like a boxy fist. And then there you have this, you know, good enough for, you know, tax dollars at least. Um, you know, and then, so you can, you know, you could totally, oh wait, there's not fingernails on your fist. <laughs> now what um, if you're totally still intimidated could you find a fist and just yeah, print it out exactly so that's the easy so that would be <laughs> thing if you have a printer which i what i was gonna do except my our neighbors gave us she let us borrow two printers and we cannot figure out how to make them work um yeah. so i had that's why i had to go to drawing but yeah go to go on google whatever type in fist drawing or you could even i mean you could probably even type in stencil fist stencil and it'll already have the shading drawn out for you but um and find a google image or whatever you want to look whatever your favorite um internet source of finding things is and print it out 
and like as long as you get the pick whatever you got to do or whatever and this that like anything you're trying to make like if you want a picture of a you know grocery cart or something you know print out the grocery cart pick picture and then you know you'll have an image that's this size because it's unless you have like some amazing giant printer right this um, printer paper like yeah everybody's so, gonna have the printer yeah. paper so um so that's to get the paper you know and the other so then i'll before i jump into the this more tedious way of doing it um the other simple thing and nowadays people actually more and more people have projectors if you have one of those little home projectors or like you can get them for really cheap now if you really want to start doing a bunch of this stuff and you if you have a projector you can actually just take that image project it on the wall to the size you want or tape your cardboard up on the wall and project the picture and just trace it and then you've got it already on your cardboard so that's like this modern day fast version that um is I've actually it's very nice to be able to do it. <laughs> it's really quick and yeah. easy. So if you have a projector just laying around at home, yeah. that is one way to do it. And oh, for those of us who don't have projectors, what what are we gonna do? Here we go. This is so those of us, the rest of us, um, <laughs> here's the old timey way to do things. So what you, what you do is you make a grid over the drawing. Start it, and I misplaced the ruler I actually used to do this, but um the ruler was the same it was basically i just laid the this is smaller than the one i had but i just basically laid the ruler starting in the middle and just made lines down it and then moved it over the next one made line traced it and just made it made my grid the width of the ruler so um both directions so you, then you have this grid set up on your image so i'll put the clip on this so you can see better oh, yeah. so, there, mm -hmm. so we yep. have the grid doesn't really matter what size the grid is what matters is how many how many it is or whatever how many cube, how cube many across you buy you have whatever you have uh -huh. um so you know here's one two three four five across and i think this is one two six down seven down seven down if you count it. and so what you then do is you get now you've, i've made a couple of these so this one i made i'm gonna move this out of the way okay so now you find your cardboard as big as you want, like however big you can find. Um, this one is not a very big piece of cardboard, but it fits on my desk. Um, and you make, you then figure out how many, if you need, so we needed five across. So luckily it worked out that these, this was big enough for four inch pieces, a like four inch grid could work perfectly across. Um, and, um, and I use, if you have one of these, little doodads uh, angle uh, framing angle I think what they're called I forget frame square framing square sorry all my carpenter friends are young. <laughs> um, they're it's they're really nice because just because you already have the right angle so you just have to get your you can either square it off of the cardboard which is you know on whatever straight edge you have on the cardboard to get us mm -hmm. get your first line and so you make your grid and so this you know you just get your corner and then you know i did we decided four inches was good so i just went every four eight twelve sixteen twenty etc um and then you make your marks and then just draw your grid out and normally i would do it with chalk on the one that the one that you'll see later that i've already cut out a lot of i did it with chalk so that you can then erase it and when you paint it you don't see the lines for this because it's hard to see the chalk on the camera i went ahead and made it in marker but I recommend just getting just a piece of chalk and doing doing your grid in chalk, and uh, you know, just make your you got so you got your starting lot starting corner, and then you just move down and make you know draw it out. So this is all four inches both directions, and I won't do that. It's very not very exciting to watch, but. That's the idea. I see some slits in your cardboard on the sides. And yeah. I know that sometimes when we get our cardboard, um, it, you know, it was a box before. So that's remnants from its previous life. Um, how um, it so it looks like it's going to be OK if your uh, yeah. if your piece has slits, we can we can work with that. Yeah. And, and the thing about and this is something I feel like this kind of comes especially from the bread and puppet world of like we never strive for things to look perfect or even care if it like if this didn't if the image went through this slit we you know you could either staple or glue a piece of cardboard behind it to hold it together but the idea with what we're talking you know 
maybe if you're going to make one fist and one perfect one, you would want it to be on a really nice piece of cardboard. But the idea is we want to make, we're talking about making like 20 of these. And so if like a few of them have some floppy lines or it doesn't really matter because you're not, you're aiming for the large, the, you're aiming for a lot, not the perfect one. So, right. so work with totally, what you got. Yeah. And you'll see like when you look at, you know, uh, that's why I was trying to find more, if you, you know, find more images of stuff, you'll, if you really start looking at the details, you'll see lots of, especially in bread and puppets work stuff, you see so, very obvious screw up stuff. Um, <laughs> that were, and you don't really notice it because you're not looking for the detail. You're not looking at it. You know, other people like working with Papa Manchette, they, they're much more attentive to detail, which is also a fun. And they actually will paper mache the edges of stuff because partly in Puerto Rico, I've seen so humid, cardboard just kind of disintegrates. Oh, and yeah. So um, some of their stuff, they, you know, they'll spend a lot more time on it. It's not as quick and dirty, but it's long lasting. Like they have mm -hmm. things they've made that have been around for like a decade now that they, they'll put wire, like once they cut it out, run wire around the edge and then paper mache it in. So still these two dimensional flat things, but they're really heavy duty and they can withstand being used over and over and over again in the street, which does also have a lot of, you know, you don't have to spend all your days like we do at Bread and Puppet repairing everything before every time you use it. Um, <laughs> so how do we transfer this great. small image? All right, so I already kind of did some drawing on this, so ignore it, pretend you can't see it. So what you do, you have your two images. What I did on this, because my cardboard was kind of small, I'm counting this top one as up here, because only just the tip of the knuckles goes into that top maybe i'll hold this closer um mm -hmm. yes so, we can see that okay so only the tip of the knuckles go to the top so i kind of just extended my grid up beyond mm -hmm. the grid that i drew just a little it's only like an inch and a half but that's all that space really needed so this is counting as you know sometimes it's helpful to write the numbers in just because if you're if you had a really detailed picture that wasn't just a fist um it's kind of helpful to just just so you know what quadrant you're in or whatever so so you're going to start, you know, so this first cube, basically what you're going to do is you're going to draw it within, you're going to draw each cube by its individually. So the first one has nothing. So that's this little spot here in our cardboard. Please. Done. No. I already did one. That's great. Yeah, done. <laughs> so your second one here, we have this little, you know, you have this thing. So it's, that's, it's about to here and here. And maybe, maybe chalk would be more visible. So you have that and it's kind of a, mm -hmm. about there. Here's our other grid lines that we don't see, but um the next then you go over to three and it just kind of cuts across and drops down about a third of the way and don't stress too much about like getting it exact because it's gonna when once you get it roughly in there you can step back from it and you know if something looks a little off you can adjust it um so then now once let's go into the two across so that's you're gonna you know here we have the the line between the knuckles and you, this is where it's starting to get more exciting because we got fingernails. So your fingernail is kind of like you have, you know, if you, what, like, let's say we squared off. So like here, you can look at this and it's like, okay, there's a triangle right here. So that's like, you know, you can kind of just put the triangle in and that'll help to space it. And a lot of this is for me, it's really just getting this dimensions right more than uh -huh. it makes it look like the drawing perfectly. So it's right. So if we're just breaking it down ourselves square by square and not looking at the bigger picture per se, um, it really helps to just break it up into shapes so that we're not so particular about the yeah. minute details. Yeah. One, one, when I was in high school, I did take, I had one year I got to take an art class with this really amazing art teacher who taught, he had people that had never drawn before making portraits that looked exactly like it. And he would make us turn the thing upside down and strictly look at shapes and shading and like not think about what the picture was. And he's like, find a square. Here's the thing, you know, and, and it, you'd turn the picture right side up again and it would look perfect because it was kind of this, he didn't have to necessarily grid things out. We would space it using like, say you can do the same thing of like, all right, my pencil, you know, like we were trying to copy it. We weren't trying to make something bigger. We were going same size, but it's the same idea. So, um, so it's basically you're going to move along your grid you know, if we go down to the third one, which is right here. So here we are in this one, you know, there's this little triangle at the bottom where like the knuckle cuts across and that, um, and that's all that is. And then the next, and oh, whoops, I messed up. It actually comes up through the last third of it. There's the end of that knuckle. And this is where you start to kind of connect 
where you start using the picture, you're like, okay, here's the finger. So it's like, now you can kind of start mm -hmm. making lines. As you can see, you're starting to see where the images go. And like I said, don't worry about, it's like boxy is fine. Just making curved lines, straight lines is totally fine. Um, and then, you know, so we get to the edge. And so when you go over like five down, just find like, where's the edge of our fist? In our picture, it's the last, like it only takes up like a maybe a quarter to a third of the outer line. So you just, you can start just by making a straight line down. It's like, that's our border. Mm -hmm. just curve it a little bit and like make the, you know, the details, however detail you want to go. And then we have our bottom coming in and then rest. So that's kind of, you get your rough layout just to get your dimensions the way you want it. And then once you do that, you kind of step back and, you know, it's always good to like put it on the lean it against the wall and just walk across the room and look at it from far away. And then you start to see like, okay, it actually needs this finger looks a little weird. And you can just start drawing it in. Mm -hmm. um, so once we have this, so you know, you've got your fist. The next thing, so making the stencil for me, like making the stencils, you don't have to do it. You could just paint this and kind of keep doing this over and over again. But this when you make the stencil, you can you, you don't even need to necessarily think of it as like you're going to spray paint all of these. A lot of what the stencil does for me is it puts these dimensions on every piece of cardboard. Right. So, so each what we're going to make basically is two. You'll have you'll have your model that's cut out, which I'm going to switch these because I already started cutting one out, so you wouldn't have to watch me cut the whole thing out. But <laughs> you're going to make your model that's the outer dimension, like where you cut out the outside shape. And you use that to cut, you know, and you'll cut, say, 20 pieces of cardboard that shape. And then you take your stencil right, and you like tracing. It yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Tracing it. And um, I kind of was making little versions of this quicker. So like, so like you cut out here's like, let's pretend this was a big piece of cardboard. So once you have your once you've drawn this out and you get the outside edge, you then just cut out a model. This is your like, and you label it's always good. Make sure you label it like, you know, it's like put an X on it or something to make it like model you know so that it doesn't get painted on right because uh, then you won't have it for later right and then and then what's like such a, if you're doing this like something the thing about this is often sometimes what happens is you'll just make the same you know all the same size size fists like all right hands or all left hands which can be fine maybe that's what people want it's like more consistent but also it's some also nice to make both sides so with this all you gotta do is flip it over and it's the other hand so I even like, like on this, I just label this is the left hand when it's this way. You know, like, let's say this was your model. Right. Just label the left hand, label the right hand. That way people kind of can know like, oh, I want to make some more right hands. Or we have five right hands and I want five left hands or whatever. So that's your, you know, you would trace that your model that you're going to use. Um, the next thing we wanted, so for, let's then go to making the stencil. So. What we want to make with a stencil is finding the dark shadows that actually give you the detail of the object. So with a fist, like look at, if you look at your own fist, let me stand over the camera this way so it faces up. So if you look at your fist, it's all, these are all the darks, the dark lines. So you want to find these shapes, um, you know, and like everyone's going to have like slightly different versions. So, you know, if you really pay attention, you can find out whose hand it was. You're looking um so what we're going to do then is find these in our drawing you know this is if you're having to draw it obviously and but also if, if you printed this printed it out and it's not already in stencil a stencilable looking thing mm -hmm. you're going to have to kind of pick out what are the most crucial because you can only cut out so much without the thing falling apart so like what are the crucial yeah i have to tell you like i i feel like i understand the the premise of stencils but then when i go to do it i always end up messing up somewhere because my brain like stops working yeah. and then melts and then i'm like no i i the other way so if you have a trick of how to remember um where we should cut and where we should not cut i would be very appreciative of so that. my trick is use different colors of markers or chalk or whatever you're going to use so like maybe so for this drawing like this is one one trick is like we made our drawing we have our basic you know let's say i'll make it look a little more complete you know let's 
this pretend I made a nice drawing of a fist that's just lined like a pencil drawing or whatever. Or it looks like, like I think I, I was gonna, this was the idea, like it's gonna do like that. It's too, we'll do it on our cardboard. That's too light. Um, so then you would, so let's say, let's say at first you take your chalk and kind of like darken in the spots that are, that are gonna be, that you know where shading is. So there's like the shading under the knuckles here, these little lines between each knuckle. Uh -huh. And the shading, for those of us who didn't go to art school or have any art training, like that is what adds the dimension to the work so that it actually brings the piece to life, yeah? Yeah, it's giving, it's what, it's what makes the, like each line is just a sh shadow. Like yeah. if it wasn't for shadows, my, you wouldn't see any of my fingers, you know, it would just be a block across or whatever. So, right. Right. so then I would take another color. So let's say we did that. And so now it's kind of, you have to be it's sort of like, then you get into like strategy of whatever, like, what is the most, what do you want the most of? So like, oh, Sharpie doesn't draw on chalk. Okay. That's a good thing to know. Um, let me find another piece of what's a Actually, I have a big heavy marker. I'll just use that. That should work. Where'd it go? Hold on, where'd it all go? There we go. Sharp marker. Anyone that was at the climate march, y'all remember these? We still have a couple cases. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like pick out the like there's one. And like I kind of or just you can even just make a line. It's like we need a line there and we need a line there. We need a line here and the thing about stencil art or any kind of you really once you start looking at it like i kind of you know if you want to go and like just look at stencil art for a little bit before you maybe try to make your first one even or try to make mm -hmm. one back and do it and you'll notice that like often there's a lot less than you realize of the drawing but your imagination fills in everything else so so you don't actually need to do that much. And again, this is like, a lot of this is really just to give you the, the dimensions. So you can then, like when we made a bunch of these for, I think it was, I think it was at that same thing with, with the South Bronx. Um, we painted them in, but then we actually went back after we took the stencil off and then hand painted each fist really quickly. Like not, we didn't go into deal, but we actually just completed it and it just looked like a hand painted fist, but we used the, st the stencil gave, gave us all the dimensions. So you can, you know, you can make your stencil really, a really nice stencil and, and uh, just, you know, spray paint or paint it in um, or just mm -hmm. do what, um, you know, use it to then paint it yourself by hand later. And for those of you who are feeling unsure uh, that, you, that you, you just did a lot of work on this piece of cardboard and you just are, it's your first time making a big stencil. My recommendation, and Jason, let me know if you agree, is try it on a piece of paper first. Oh, and yeah. then, and, and then, you know, feel it out. And then if yep. you're not, and then if you, if you're like feeling like your brain is understanding, because that's the thing that happens yeah. to me is my brain just shuts off halfway through and then I revert back to positive and negative space, but flipped. So, yeah. And the paper, yeah, I was actually, that was one, I was going to, I thought about doing that originally, but then I, now that I'm seeing it on a camera. It's no, it's good. It's good on the camera. It's good uh, on cardboard, but just as a note, if you're feeling like, oh, I just did all that work, what am I going to do? Yeah. Okay. So now, now you're going to cut out, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah. So like, you know, when, what I, what you can kind of do is just start with the, the big pieces and like start with the stuff that you feel confident about mm -hmm. and and then you just you can always just do a quick test you know even just using pencil and like take the take your drawing and or take your stencil and take a pencil and scribble all the places you cut out in on a blank piece of paper or whatever mm -hmm. or on a blank cardboard and then lift it up and if you can recognize you know like oh that's it needs more over here or you know you kind of as you're going keep trying new pieces um, and or the new cutting out new new sections and seeing what it needs. So, um, you know, so I just, like I said, draw, make a different color, draw your spots that you feel like you need to cut out 
first and then cut them out and then and then i don't know if i don't know how often y'all go into tool maintenance but make sure you have a really sharp blade for your box cutter yeah you can also use one of these guys like the whatever the exacto knife exacto mm -hmm. yeah it's um, sometimes easier some people it's actually, I think it's like easier to get like more graceful cuts with one of those, but I've kind of gotten used and to it. And a cutting mat underneath too, I see you're using. Yeah, I have a cutting mat. Often I don't, this is because I'm in my workshop, I have one, but normally when we do gigs, places, or do go work with a community, we just lay down big, thick cardboard. Like you find your triple layer cardboard that it's impossible to cut or double up a couple pieces and put it on a table and just cut it on the cardboard and those, you just sacrifice a few pieces of cardboard. Um, okay. So anyway, I will, so that's, I won't watch you must watch the whole thing. So here's the one I started earlier where I cut Whoa. out. Oh, can you point out to us where you cut on that so that we can really see it? Because some of them it looks like lines, but I know that they're they're probably cut out. So anything green that you're seeing is cut out. Um so maybe I can move this over it. Yeah, that's great. Yep. Okay, so like okay. we had that line that I started on the other one. Here's the shade between each finger. Then I cut out one up here to like make the marks. This is cut out, you know, between. And the main the main thing to remember is never complete a line. I think that's another helpful tip, maybe. You know, like finger, like especially here, the fingernail is like almost all cut out, but you leave it connected here and here so that this the whole fingernail doesn't just fall off. And right. if you do accidentally cut it, if you actually, you know, we, we do that all the time where you accidentally cut too far and you just just take a piece of tape and tape it back together um that would so be never, me I... <laughs> yeah. yeah it's never like you, you didn't ruin the whole thing you just tape it back and then cut like that i immediately saw that fingernail and thought oh that is the part where i would have accidentally cut right. it all the way through thinking i'm doing the right thing and then as it comes off in my hand realizing no 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 i didn't mean to yeah. yes so you just tape it back on and then recut the tape and let it be uh -huh. really fine um so so this is all the so here you know this is my first go around of or of the first version like you know you know I'll see a few places like all the little lines um that make your finger knuckles um so and like i said if you're doing an image that wasn't a fist like anything else it's the same concept where you find the shapes it's actually you know especially if you do something square that's more square it's a lot easier because you can just find all the angles and little lines and stuff but um you know and like if you look at those like stencil alphabets you can kind of see how they keep you know there's find the piece that's the least annoying to leave or whatever um so here we have so that's done enough it looks great Let's try. we have people saying it looks amazing i agree it's, it's really impressive that you're able to uh to do that and now I, i'm excited to see how you would use that to reproduce an image so, yeah so um let me see here what's the in my room okay so for the other okay so let's take what we'll do is we'll just take this to a piece of cardboard we won't make the we all understand the art the idea of for our model the other piece so basically i'm gonna real quick just so pretend this one didn't have the stencils cut out of it just so we have it so let's say this is our if this was your our outside one this would be our main shape that we're going while you're trimming that, I'm going to ask you some questions. Oh, sure. Um, so how long have you been involved with Bread and Puppet? I know that you have worked with them quite a bit over the years. When did you first start working with them? Uh, I've worked with them for about 15 years now, 15 summers. I don't wow. live, I'm, I'm like a part-time, a bunch of us are just mostly summer and then New York mm -hmm. City when they come to New York. So. Um, and how did you first learn about them? Uh, I was on my first puppet tour with my, me and my buddy Dave had a puppet company like 20 years ago called RPM Puppet Conspiracy. And we were touring before the FTAA protests up in Quebec City, organizing for that. And I actually hadn't heard of, I was like, I remember we were, we performed in DC and we were hanging out with Marianne Ross actually. And they kept talking, they kept talking about Brendan Puppet because two of the other guys from Insurrection Landscaper were both from Brendan Puppet. And then the next day, like we're in the car going to, wherever town, Baltimore or Richmond or somewhere. And I was just like, Dave, what is this Brennan puppet everyone's talking about? And I didn't, yeah, I didn't, he had explained to me it was this big theater. So I didn't know, cause I'm, <laughs> I'm from the South. Like Brennan puppet 
doesn't they do go to the south some but they hadn't been there a lot so i never saw and i'd never actually really seen puppet shows before when i before i started performing them so it was kind of a like okay and then they like it wasn't for a few more years that i finally went up to vermont and actually saw them perform but were you already involved in activist culture at that point and then so it just yeah. folded in yeah me and dave were touring a bunch doing political puppet shows like mm -hmm. small like small hand tabletop and hand puppet shows you know and how political. does somebody start into that realm like were, were your parents politically involved and then you just kind I, of like got folded into that I, or it, like what happened it. yeah <laughs> My buddy, he just like kind of, he was started, he kind of got into it through a friend in Chicago that was also out of Bread and Puppet. And then, yeah, he sort of pulled me into on a tour and I, I thought I was just going to be like wiggling some stuff for helping like schlep around. I was unemployed at the time. And then we, you know, we met up and he just had, there was like some vague ideas for the puppet show that he was working on. And I was like, wait, you mean there's no script? There's no puppet? He's like, no, nah, there's some ideas. And so we like spent two weeks locked in a freezing warehouse in Philly and made our first show together and it turned out okay and it ended you know, up being pretty good we like started just touring constantly and sort of survive we're able to make enough from donations at shows to get by um for two and we were like 24 and you know total bums and didn't have a, you know neither of us had a place to live really so we weren't paying rent or anything we just kind of traveled continuously but um yeah and it just kind of it was kind of became both of us have been doing like political work through art and different forms and puppetry just sort of felt like the most uh the most effective more so than like music or any of the other things that we also did so we just kind of stuck with it and we kept doing it yeah so awesome. yeah so that, that's my uh silly puppet how the your hell origin I'm story yeah now i'm an old dude that wiggles but still plays with dolls so it's kind of <laughs> It's sort of become what was the first um, really big protest that you ever went to? Uh, oh, it was probably the whatever the um, what was the DC thing IMF in two thousand maybe two thousand one. Mm -hmm. The big it was like right around the the next big one after the big WTO in Seattle. Like we didn't go to the West Coast, but all of us on the East Coast went to. Not all, I mean, people went everywhere, but uh, the big yeah, there was a big DC to like shut down the IMF meetings, I think. I think that's what mm -hmm. it was. But yeah, that was kind of where the first time I, I came and like saw people using giant puppets. And they were very tactical, like tactical direct oh. action puppetry, which was pretty exciting. Um, but you know, stuff we can go into the first time is yeah, as yeah, we yeah. Do, of like- um, So I see you really lining it up underneath. Okay, yeah, so here we go. So now we have, so this, this would be our model that like, you know, let's say you have like a couple people helping out, like you're all trying to make a bunch of these. You'd have one uh -huh. person, you know, draw, just find on cardboard, trace this out and then cut them out. And then you're going to take, you know, then you have another person taking this one and you, and basically whatever method you want to use, spray paint, or I kind of prefer just, I don't like the fumes of spray paint so much to just use regular house paint and just paint it in with a paintbrush. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, let me go grab a blank piece of cardboard so because this yeah. since this one's already drawn on you won't see it um, yeah so we can really see how effective the stenciling would be if you're just joining us uh, Jason Hicks is showing us how to make a two-dimensional uh, image that can be replicated easily using a stencil and so for this image we're using a fist but this could be any kind of image that you feel is um, a powerful uh, message for what you're trying to say oh let's see here and feel free to ask questions if anybody has questions for Jason I will uh, field them to him um, so what so while we're doing this kind of tedious, so here we are. One of the things that I like, to, especially in thinking about puppetry in the streets, um, in which we'll hopefully have time as we get this, or we can start talking about it now. Um, it's very watery, um, or the steak. Uh, is, you know, a lot of times- Is that, like, like an, is that an acrylic paint, by the way? Yeah, just some yeah. old house paint. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, or you can use, you know, if you have acrylics, House paint's the cheapest thing because you can get a gallon of it for 20 bucks instead of like a two of cool. it. Um, so, but, so there's like, you can think of like a lot of times 
like people kind of think of puppetry as just like a you know especially in protest to like it's just to bring you know bring joy or make it a celebratory whatever you know there's like the, there's that aspect of puppetry that's real and a thing but there's also then there's the, you know there's using puppetry for messaging and like with this you know we're making these flat things which are you know you could say that you know you could use this just as a sign you could paint your message right on the on the fist but you can also like it's also good to think of it there's so the natural the theatrics of what you're doing and this is where we go and like we can talk about mo movement in a little bit um but to think about the what your visuals show and demonstrate so like in this where you can start coming up with like choreography and like like let's say you have like a bunch of these fists and then you could make one big flat something else like it's like what's your target what's your you know what's the anti whatever you're against whatever that may be you know if this was like right now we're talking a lot of all about police brutality a lot and so what does the police state look like what's that image you know is it a big you just have a big cop hat a cop car the police what's the larger prison system and police state look like so whatever that image is you know you can have that image and it and like instead of just like saying what you're wanting and writing on this you know writing whatever you know abolish the police on this fist you actually like demonstrate what that looks like with by like making some simple choreography with like 20 of these fists you know breaking the cop car in half or something you know whatever you decide you want to do so like thinking of the theatrics of of that. right now a lot of the messaging is uh defund the police so right. could you like um oh yeah look at that look what you just did so, there so here we have the very simple you know you can kind of see it it's like this is with very minimal cutout like i didn't actually ever i didn't actually probably complete everything that i was meant to on that one but it's kind of good like how i was saying you can start with what you you know start with an aspect of it and see if it's enough and so you can like you could either say like no it needs more and you can make some of these lines bigger you mm -hmm. know like they like over here but also since this isn't cut out yet in reality you know let's say it was it'd be cut out there'd be a border here here you know this would all have just be the edge of it so so and again, like I was saying, like this, you know, so that's once you have the border on it, like if this was cut out, that would pretty much look like a fist. And, right. And you could, you know, like it's, you could decide, I think blocking my drawer to get my paintbrush. You wanted to, so this is like, you could either leave it as a stencil or get a, you know, get another brush. Like once, and let's say, you know, if you're like, okay, actually, I would like it to like, you know, be more and I kind of like just a I like hand painted stuff personally you know just my own personal choice of like aesthetics I guess so like even if I've made this into a stencil I would go back to make it but then make it actually be hand a hand painted thing which doesn't take too much you know it's not like I have to spend an hour on each one it's like you know a couple minutes on of detail and then you can, you know, then that like incomplete thumbnail, like the, you could actually, you know, complete it. Yeah, like I could see like having um, it, uh, the beginnings of lots of these and then letting people fill in their own too. Exactly, yeah. And like letting, you know, especially yeah. like working with like kids or, teen, you know, and like there's definitely, you know, like stuff made by kids is super fun and like it'll have its own aesthetic. And also you can, but if you give them like enough template to like, you know, it's going to come out sloppy and look, and then, you, you know, sometimes, you know, we'll cheat and go back and do a little bit of repairs on some of the ones kids make just to, like, help them so they feel good carrying them in the streets, you know, when they see, like, yeah. one that's done really well and one that's done kind of sloppily, you know, it's nice that I think it's, you know, help kids, help kids learn the skills instead of just, like, leaving them just to, like, do what you want, kid, you know, and, like, let them do what they want, but help them learn, like, we're making this thing, you know, and it's, yeah, yeah, you know, I think it's, I think that stencil is very helpful for that, is that, you know. Also in a time of social distancing, if you know that there's going to be a protest, but we can't just have like a poster making party, you know, yeah. um, like all getting all together, you could be the place where people come to pick up their 
um, oh, yeah. pre-made piece, take home with them, and then customize to then bring to an outdoor rally. Yeah, like you could then, yeah, like say you know, wanted this, and then whatever the, you know, you could they could each write them a message that they wanted to put on here or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so then so now we have you know so that's a fist, and then um, you know thinking of. There's all sorts of, you know, all the things that I also try to, whenever I teach workshops or done workshops, it also in stealing people is like, think of things to think about when, especially when you're using human features or human characters or human is like representation. And what is, you know, right now, like we're talking about black lives matter, black lives, because that's who's under attack the most. And so, so we're like, are we representing, you know, what is this hand, like who, what, skin color is his hand what you know etc like what are the so like thinking of those details and like is really important especially if you're you know me i'm a white guy so like coming at things like if i showed up in the street with a bunch of these and they were all painted pink you know <laughs> like that would be a very different thing so that's sort of the nice thing about using cardboard and like leaving it the cardboard color is it's a, it's a you know i was the joke you know, it's like you're, don't trust anyone lighter than a paper bag um good advice mm -hmm. and so you know cardboard box is the same same idea um so yeah so keeping that's the nice thing of card using cardboard and keeping it natural or just but thinking about like oh if you or if you want to show like a solidarity of like all sorts of people like make sure you have you know think about that and um yeah so right. thinking about the what you're what are you and but this really comes into play more especially if you start if you're making i feel like faces and fiction making sure that you do things tastefully and they're well done you know i think you know i've like you know you see a lot of very i've seen a lot of very schleppily made giant puppets and you're kind of like oh i want to get a little bit of pointers on how to make that but you know because you don't want to you don't make caricatures of people that are and there. then would you just with your final cardboard piece would you hold it up or would you attach a rod to it i know some protests you're not allowed to use yeah. the wooden holes. I think, let's see, what, let's see, what can I, are you going to switch to the uh, iPad? I can kind of, yeah, I mean, like, you can, I think the easiest thing is keeping them just cardboard, like making sure the cardboard doesn't do it, like I made it really floppy. I I uh-huh. Direction of the spin. But you can either reinforce it, even reinforcing cardboard with more cardboard behind it, either by stapling it, or you can you know, glue it, or whatever, you, whatever means you have. Um, I, you could put a stick on it if I think, you know, if you had to, if you really want to hold them up high, but also just being able to hold them above your head gives you height over the, not over a crowd. And it, you're, you're not, you're not having to like, it's easier to carry. Like that's the, the thing that what I like about flat, these kind of flat puppets is you can bundle them all together and one person can carry like 20 of them. So you can like strap them on your back if you have to and ride your bike to a thing or throw them in a trunk of a car and so you have this small thing and then but as you see 20 of them you know even just me having two takes up a lot more space and so and then you can you know you start to get to like the depth and like having different heights and the way they move you know and so so that's i kind of tend to leave i like in like you know not being shy like let people it's okay that people see your hands you know it's like you don't i don't know some people you can make it more realistic or whatever but also i think it's like you're part of the image also so like the fact that it's being held by a person is like fine especially yeah. when so it's, you know you can have you like found have, have you found that if you were to make like five of them and even if you didn't know who they were going to go to, if you brought five to a protest, you could find four other people that would want to hold something like that? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I think it's, yeah. and that's, you know, it's definitely that's, you can almost always find people. Um, it's also, this is like I was saying at the beginning of like working with organizations, being in touch with organizations and start like join organizations. We kind of all need to be organized. And so find whatever the cause that you're the most passionate about, like find, even if it's like in this moment, if you happen to work with like an environmental group or something, even though this is focused on police brutality, it's all this stuff is connected. And so it's like, you bring your 10 people from that organization and you have your 10 people. So that's, you know, that's, but it is also really easy to usually find like 
people want something to do. It's like, you know, protesting, especially like, you know, right now people, we've, people have been in the streets every night marching for hours, you know, like it's fun to suddenly have something, you know, something to do in that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which is another thing, which we can kind of maybe that shift into that that focus a little bit of like, what do you do with all these? Um, how are we doing on time? I'm actually not even track. Um, we're good. We have about, I'd say another 10 minutes and then we should probably okay. wrap it up. Great. Mm -hmm. So, um, so then to real quick thinking about how to, yeah, exactly this, what we're talking about of like, how do you get people and then what do you do with these things once you have people? Because like a lot of times you see a bunch of stuff and people just carry it like a sign. And like, that's fine um, to do, you know, and it's, it's a, it can be a beautiful sign, but you can also is to think about what it, like we were saying, what it does, even if you don't have to, like, you're not trying to make a narrative happen where you like have the, what you're against and you're trying to, you can, that's one way of doing it. Um, the other thing is to like, just moving together in different ways. And the way some of the stuff that like some just tips on like think, what things to think about um, is like, so there's one, if you have a bunch of the same things, one thing we often do is just to follow the leader type situation and you can change out who that person is. Like we always go like, whoever wants to, you know, gets an idea of what they want to do with this, step in front, you know, and you let people just, you can either come up with a system where everyone takes a, a move or, you know, you can make one person just in front for a little while and they step back and whoever feels like it stepped forward. And, and so everyone is kind of watching that person. So, so you're either, you know, let's let's say, and hopefully, you know, like in Detroit, there's always been like amazing drum lines or you know, cars with banging or bikes with a crazy stereo system. So if you have a rhythm, you know, you can just kind of even just keep doing this together or opposite of each other. You know, like having people walk marching like that can do, mm -hmm. you know, makes it gives it like where you're much more of a presence in the street or even you know just doing like different things and then you know holding them all up and everyone's screaming at the same time or like thinking of just any like you know this is where you, if you have anyone if anyone's a dancer that's part of that can hang out like they dancers think of the whole body and how to use it so thinking of like you know having everyone squat on the ground and then jump or you know just any motion that you can all do together is again, it's getting back to that sh demonstrating collectivism and demonstrating the power of working together. Um, awesome. We have a few to... comments here from, yeah. uh, from our audience. Um, one person said, uh, Josari Molina says, thank you. Uh, Dweeb Zoid says that um, they use yardsticks for their um, large puppets and that they agree many people will take the puppets if you make them for them um, who didn't have time or inspiration and it makes people at the protest feel very welcome. Yeah. And then they okay. have a question for you. They said, do people think you are crazy the minute you say puppet when you first try to reach out to a group? Uh, sometimes, but I feel like in puppets have been in protests so much the last 20 years that it's not as wacky as it might have been, you know, at some point. I don't know. Puppets have always been kind of part of anti, you know, anti-establishment. Anti, yeah, the, you know, puppets that were kind of like the bottom of the barrel of the entertainment world, you know, so we're, we're the <laughs> subversive theater people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, obviously there's the, like parts of puppetry are accepted, but it's like puppets are generally kind of, they're in the streets, like Punch and Judy, you know, even that, they were street shows. Every So it's sort of, I feel like they're, you know, definitely people are like, or I think what people find when you get more funny reaction, where you're like, Come do it. Come be in the work with puppets. Come take a puppet, and then you hand them this, and they're like, well, "What the frig is? It's a piece of cardboard, you know." And right. so it's like that actually to, is where you kind of people can be like, "But it's just a piece of cardboard," and, you know. And it's like I want to, you know, they think you think puppets like a muppet or like, you know, a hand puppet. You know, you, they think you're gonna like give out a bunch of hand puppets, and but then you have to. So that's what you have to sort of explain is like we're gonna all work together, and like. What's helpful, I feel like, especially when, we, when we're teaching people that like this is actually puppetry, is like, say you get 20 people, have 10 of them watch and 10 of them like get them to move together and then switch places so that they all kind of get to see what they're about to do. Um, instead of just, you know, you can't just throw them all in and start walking, which often what happens because you're always strapped for time and it's the last minute and suddenly the march starts walking. 
but if you can take 10 minutes to just quickly spend a few minutes with each group watching so they get an idea of what they're going to do and it helps them like if you're going to do something like say follow the leader they can like oh i saw this look good i wonder if this looks good or it gives you know lets you kind of imagine you're able to sort of imagine what the thing you're doing looks like so yeah. Well, I want to encourage everybody who's watching uh, tonight that if you do end up making a stencil, whether it be a fist or some other kind of large image, that you take a picture and share it in the comments of this video so that we can see all the amazing work that uh, you were inspired to do by um, tonight's uh, workshop with Jason. Um, Jason, do you have any parting thoughts for us before we say our goodbyes? I, uh, I don't know. What are, I think we kind of got, in, got into it. I guess just try stuff try it's stuff. always a thing. like do it don't be afraid to do something badly that's always important mm -hmm. especially when you're trying you know it's like we're gonna be in the streets a lot for the next long while it's not yes. like it's gonna end so like yes. you'll get better everybody you get better at it you know it becomes like anything you like you learn you it gets you know but do it badly and be okay with that and like you know, someone, we did a, one of our puppet shows, we had a call and thing and someone said like, you know, ask like, what about doing political arts? Like, don't be afraid to make mistakes. But then, you know, if you make a mistake, also be willing to admit you made a mistake, you know, and like, oh, that was, yeah, we, you know, you might, you might do something that maybe didn't come out right or someone was a, took offense to it or didn't, they reinterpreted it the wrong way. And it's like, learn from that and just be like, oh, it's not gonna, you know, you're not gonna burn in hell because of it. And they're like, oh, you might, we're all gonna probably burn in hell, but you know. <laughs> The beer is still Something's good. gonna happen. Yeah, Something's like, gonna happen. But yeah. you know, it's it's if you're feeling like you want to be a part of something, show up. Be safe about it. Make sure you're wearing your mask. We want everybody mm -hmm. to to be safe. Um, and uh, and and try and make something to bring and and try a stencil because mm -hmm. this could be a really great way. I'm gonna come back down to the to your stencil again for a second. This okay. could be a really great way to. Um, you know, to be able to reproduce a large amount in a short amount of time with materials that you can easily find. And like you said, cardboard can be sourced at um, large stores, um, bike shops. I love that idea. Uh, appliance stores, uh, things like that. Back to the back of a mall, if the mall's open these days. A lot of malls are not open, but oh, bike shops are definitely doing great. So I would totally I check out a bike shop. Those are the everyone gets right around the yeah, edge right around uh what do you call it uh like holidays christmas birthday you look flat screen tvs oh Box. yeah flat screen Those tvs together. well people are home right now so i bet a lot of people are buying tvs yeah yeah you're like i just kind of like <laughs> i just would make a corner in like your house somewhere your whatever you got to and just stockpile it like keep a box with you all the time like i kind of always have one in my pocket because you can uh, Colonel Rachel Sprague has taught me this of like when you're going out to hunt for cardboard, you don't have to, instead of bringing all this clunky cardboard with you, just cut out the good parts of the cardboard there on the street and leave the rest of it in the recycling pile or whatever and just take the big piece you want. And and then you have a bunch of nice pieces without having to like, like awesome. I'm in my room here you know, behind this curtain. It's like I have these piles of cardboard just stuck Yay, in Yay, cardboard piles. That's awesome. It, we've been trying to stockpile some cardboard in our residency space, but it's hard to find big pieces. But now I now my brain is churning a little bit of like, oh, yes, we haven't actually checked out some of our local sources yet. So, well, Jason, I want to say a big, big thank you to you for um, sharing your knowledge with us tonight, sharing these ideas of ways that we can be um, making um, protest imagery and protest puppets and uh, making them in mass and then bringing them with us. Uh, and, you know, keep keep doing what you're doing. Thanks, and thanks for organizing this. Yeah, um, and uh, I'm gonna say goodnight to you and I'm gonna bring it back over to me. Thank you so much, Jason. Right. It was nah, a pleasure. Thanks, for, thanks everybody. Have fun. <laughs> Be safe. Yes, and be safe. Make sure you wear your mask, people. I don't have my mask on right now because I'm in my studio space, but <laughs> as soon as I go outside, I'm masking it up. Um, so I just want to say, um, so tonight we saw Jason Hicks presenting two-dimensional massive uh, protest puppets. Our next episode of our protest puppet series, episode three, will be next Wednesday night, 8.30 p.m., and that will be with Gerald Henderson out of Chicago. Gerald is a puppeteer of color, and he will be uh, showing us how to make his own style of protest puppet that we could bring with us to any kind of demonstration that we might be going 
going to in the next few months. Um, so thank you again so much. If you like this video, um, please be sure to like and um, share. And if you haven't already, make sure you like our Facebook's cr Facebook page and uh, follow us so you can see any other live videos that we're doing. We try to do something live every single day. And uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel too because that's always helpful. Thank you so much. Have a great night and we'll see you soon. Bye everybody.